Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds in the studio on a Thursday morning. So, if the Cardinals had had a bad April, then came back like they did in May, and then kind of just got consistent, I would have said that, yeah, April was just a bad luck situation. But you look at the season as a whole so far, and here we are in the middle of June, I don't think you can call it bad luck anymore. I think you have to call it a bad team. Well, there's a couple of ways to look at it. Of course, Cardinals fans aren't accustomed to any of this. The last two decades, they've been a good team, but every team goes through a down period. New England Patriots did. The Atlanta Braves, who owned the National League East for so many years, did. New York Yankees have gone through slumps, and now the Cardinals are going through one. They are not a, not a very consistent team at all. Why it's happening, you know, my, can anybody, it, maybe maybe it's just that bad luck. Maybe it isn't luck at all. Maybe the fortunes, the baseball fortunes, have just collapsed on this team. Or, or, and this is the most sobering thing of all, maybe they just aren't as good as everyone thought they should be, including the PR staff and the media and everyone else. Maybe they just aren't that good. If they let one get away yesterday, that is just mind-boggling. Maybe this is the low water mark of the season. It is mathematically. They are now 15 games under 500 at 27 wins and 42 losses. I don't know whether they can recover from this. I guess mathematically you can, but certainly not the way they're playing. But here's a game. They are within one strike of a win. It's 5-3 to three in the last of the ninth inning. Two strikes on the batter, Mike Yastrzemski. He's had a down year. And what's Gallegos do? Grooves one and Yastrzemski, who is the uh, nephew of one of the all-time greats of baseball, sticks one 420 feet up into the upper deck in right field, about 17 rows, 20 rows up. Good Lord. Tied the game, and then the Cardinals' bullpen just simply collapsed. And in the 10th inning, San Francisco wins at 8-5, and the Cardinals continue to muddle along. I'm, I'm, I must admit, I'm surprised. I did not think it would happen quite this way. Didn't think they had a, a great team. But I thought they certainly had a playoff contender, judging from a Goldschmidt and Arnado and people of this caliber. But I don't know. It just isn't working out. No, that game yesterday was done, and it should have been. But, uh, yeah, they might not be winning games, but they might be uh, uh, winning fisticuffs, though, <laughs> if, uh, if it comes down to it. They had a little dust-up with the Giants yesterday, didn't they? Uh, it was it's two days ago. It was Jack Flaherty who was pitching for the Cardinals, and he had he has a history down here when he was with the Springfield Cardinals of being, well, just has a history, let's put it that Aggressive. Way. Yeah, he's walking off the mound after he retired the Giants, and this is on Tuesday night, and it's Thursday, and the Cardinals have the day off. He's walking off the mound, and he starts shouting at the Giants runner uh, who has been on base, and he's all the way over in the other dugout. Well, come on, shouting about what? Hell, the inning's over. What do you... Anyway, he walks off, has some words. They start to meet, and then the benches come out. So there was nothing. I think it's more frustration than anything else. These guys, they feel this just as badly as the fans do, if not worse. And you know that <laughs> you have to think, well, here's a guy getting a lot of money, Flaherty and Gallegos and Arnado and Goldschmidt. They're being paid a lot of money. They understand what they're supposed to do. This is their profession, and yet they're not getting things done. They absorb this. And now they're not going to show it to you. That's unprofessional. But there certainly has to be a level of frustration with these people as it would be with anybody else. 110%. It's got to be. And you're seeing it on the field. You're seeing it at the press conferences. And you see it in the lack of play. Last but not least, uh, we got the U.S. Open starting off today. Uh, when's the... Uh What's the weather looking like? And well, it'll be very good in Los Angeles. Of course, they had the torrential rains earlier, and that has softened things up a little bit. This is most unusual, but this is the Los Angeles Country Club that has never hosted a U.S. Open, and it started back in the late 1800s. Never had one. Why? Because the membership probably didn't want it. Well, they do now. It's a very tough course. It is a par 70, but plays... Uh, I believe it's 7,400 yards. That's long for a par 70. They have five, get this one, five par three holes. Five of them. But they're very, very, very difficult par three holes. What do I think is going to happen? Hey, this, this tournament may end up at even par, and maybe the winner is above par. This is a very tough course. 
Most of these guys have not seen it. it you know, then the practice rounds, of course, it's going to be a pretty good challenge. Mandatory mini camp happening for the Kansas City Chiefs. This is not absolutely mandatory, though. Some of the veterans, some of the older guys can get a pass. Is that right? Well, mandatory means mandatory. It means you're there. You're there because to most. the company told you to be. But, yeah, there are, there are always exceptions to the rule, and Chris Jones is one of them. Now, Jones doesn't have any reason to not be there. The other guys do. They're rehabbing from injuries, and that, that's perfectly understandable, and that is a pass from Andy Reid and the coaching staff. But in Jones' case, he's not. However, you understand why it's happening. He is in contract negotiations for an extension. He's trying to prove his point. And come on, it's the mini camp in mid-June, probably hot up in Kansas City. Do we have to go through that? And he's proven himself many times over his valuable commodity. So no, he's not showing up. Will he be fined fifty thousand dollars a day, or maybe it's twenty-five? Whatever it is, it's numbers of thousands. It could come up to a hundred thousand if he misses today. Yeah, he'll be fined that, but he, <laughs> they won't pay him. He won't. He won't see that taken out of his. At least I wouldn't think so out of his paycheck although he makes a lot of money. Bottom line is this. He's trying to prove his point, trying to get the contract negotiations, which may be stalled at the moment or may be at an impasse. Who knows? Whatever it is, he's trying to prove his point, and we'll see what happens. And I'm sure he's going to get that contract. He deserves every penny, in my opinion, and I hope they can get it done sooner than later. Except, Mike, they didn't get it done with Orlando Brown. I throwing in a monkey wrench. Stop right there. I'm just throwing in a possibility that nothing is a given. I know that nothing is a given, but you can't compare the two because Chris Jones absolutely handled business. Orlando Orlando was just not worth the money. He wasn't consistent. He just wasn't. (laughs) So you can't compare the two. Yes, you're right. They didn't go after him, but he wasn't worth what he got paid. I'll tell you that right now. That's subjective opinion on your part. (laughs) I see what I see. It's all subjective, my guy. Speaking of which, now if you want to get real subjective, tell me your thoughts on the new name for Springfield's arena football team. I'm not going to. Oh, uh, <laughs> come on. It is what it is. Let's put it the that people way. want to hear it, Ned. How do you really feel? They are going to be called the Ozarks Lunkers. After the big bash, the huge bash that's taken out of Table Rock or wherever it happens to be. The Ozarks Lunkers because the constituency, the fans, are apparently the ones who voted this name in. And Lunkers is something that I guess is synonymous with this area. Not being a tried and true fisherman, I, I can't come on that, but um, it is a little unusual. Ozarks Lunkers is the name. The team's new owner will be Mark Burgess. He operates Oz Air out of the Springfield Regional Airport. He has a charter flight service and does very well. So Mark Burgess and his staff will pretty much operate the team, which is going to play, as everyone knows, out at the, Spring- the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds in the new arena that is now under construction. And I'm told it's going to be completed in time for the fall, this fall, this coming fall. The Ozarks Lunkers will begin play one year from now, June of 2024. It's indoor football, 50-yard field. The rules are a little bit different. Only 15 players out there, six of them at a time on the field. So it's a different ball game, but it'll be entertaining. And it is summertime, 10 weeks in the summer, five home and five away. And uh, we'll see how things develop. Tickets are on sale now, but it's the Ozarks Lunkers. That is their name. I have uh, I played a show over at the uh, fairgrounds and saw they got that building going up quick. And it's going to be something, man. I'm telling you right now. But, uh, yeah, the name, I... <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I was like super stoked that I was going to get to wear some really cool like gear and uh, like rep Springfield team and stuff and all that. You but still wear it. <laughs> Come on, hold. So what happened with the uh, Royals and the Springbird yesterday? Boy, the Royals lose again. They are now eighteen and fifty on the year. Eighteen wins, fifty losses. But here is a, an incredible anomaly in their game last night. Cincinnati Reds win by a score of seven to four. But when you take a look at the box score, Kansas City outhit Cincinnati 15 to 7. That is more than twice as many hits as the Cincinnati Reds got, and yet the Reds win the game 7 to 4. You mean the Royals got 15 hits? My God, how many did they leave on base? And the answer is 14. 14 runners left stranded. You're not going to win a game leaving that guy, many guys on base, and that's an imbalance in your lineup, and Kansas City has it. Everybody knows. 
Springfield Cardinals are one game above 500. Let's go. They knocked off the Tulsa Drillers, the best team in the Texas League, beat them again 6-2. Hey, the Springbirds are playing very, very well. And that series continues right on through until Sunday. All right. Well, God. Lunkers? <laughs> what in the hell is going on, Ned? You have a great day.